but how do I know I'm a fit? I don't know. If you, um, if you can make yourself look presentable, if you can learn the information, if you can be coachable and have a, have a burning desire to succeed and um, be willing to follow a system, then uh, you'll be a fit. What if I'm not, what if I didn't go to the best high school, didn't graduate? Oh. What if I didn't go to college? No college education. Well, I only went to a little bit of college, but I didn't. What about my skin color? Well, I, I can't imagine anything left on this, in this country where we care about your skin color. What about, where, what about uh, where I grew up? What neighborhood? Rich neighborhood, poor neighborhood? Nothing, none of those matters. How about my clothes? Your clothes should be, now your clothes might matter. Your clothes should look uh, decent. Do you have to go and buy them at Nordstrom? No. Can you go down and get them at uh, Ross or uh, Target or Walmart or the Salvation Army if you need to? Yeah, you should probably so what go you're saying the washing machine and look If I can look presentable, yeah. if I have a reliable transportation, I have a car, right? you can't you take be Uber. To, to, get the get to no, Uber, probably, Uber. Uber might work for a couple for a while, but actually it might work. It might work. If you have to. But if I, if I have a reliable car, if I can pass the exam, and if I have some decent clothes to get started, I, and, not, and I don't need to have a big education, no. I, can get, I can succeed here. Yes. Okay. So. You can, but will you? That's the question. So okay. part-time, full-time, spare time? Um, I like the, uh, I think depending on where you're at and the kind of person that you are, See, I'm a full-time person, so I'm a, I'm a jump in the pool. And if I don't know how to swim, I'm okay if somebody comes behind me and pushes me in and let's just start swimming. So if you're that kind of person, then get in and get working. Um, don't sit around a whole lot of time messing around on websites. Okay. Um, but I like the... Oh, I thought you were done. I like the part-time to full-time. <laughs> I like that transition. I think that spare time is difficult, but you know what? We have lots of single moms and we have lots of moms and dads, single dads or dads that um, they have to start that way. But it all goes back, that goes back to the first question. It really depends on you. Yeah, and when I say it takes, generally speaking, what, four to six weeks? Yeah. That means four to six weeks of people that are running, that are, that are running appointments every week. Would you agree with that? Yeah, you're you, going to be dialing every right. week. Right, so if your spare time, week. it's not going to be four to six weeks. It might be four to six months before you really have right. a grasp on it. But you can still make some sales and still make some money. You should still be making sales and you should still be making money. You had to have some consistent activity, whether, whether right. it's whether, you know, once a month, you know, whatever, right? Yep. Okay, so uh, lead budget for, okay. a, for a new agent. So lead budget. You stop peeking at my notes. If you're, oh, <laughs> I thought the answers were there. Yeah. yeah. Survey okay. says. So, um, Lead budget. So it's funny that we asked this question because I was just today, I pulled out a notebook looking for something and um, some notes that I had taken from a conference call a year ago was about lead budget. And that was, I forgot to finish telling you that. That's what the page was looking at me before I knew about this question. So um, lead budget. If you are full time and you are past that kind of first or second week, your lead budget should be $250 a week. Uh, again, here's my disclaimer. And some people don't like, we already had this discussion this week. Some people don't like my personality. I'm a little black and white. Um, but uh, it, it, you got, we got to be honest. And $250 a week is really what you should be running to give you the consistency of a high quality lead and a consistency of lead flow. Because I'll tell you what, if you spend $250 this week and you think that's going to last you for eight weeks, you're going to get to the seventh week. And here's what I hear from people who do this. Well, I've called all my leads like a thousand times and uh, these three people just are never answering the phone. Okay, that's, that's why. It's, it's not only about what, having enough people to call, which is a big importance. All their leads meant they had six. Right, all their yeah. leads meant they had six. <laughs> um, but the other problem is that uh, you not only have enough quantity, but it starts to get janky with your, your own mindset. So That's it's true. why we'll do a video about um, how to handle. So you leads. get quality leads through the through the quantity. Through the quantity of as leads. like everything else. And that constant influx, right? If you have a hole in your, if you have a hole in a bucket and you have to keep the water the bucket full of water, that means you have to constantly be putting water in, right? Same thing. So that's the first thing. And if you're not full time, then I would probably not do anything less than really like $125 a week. And you have to be consistent. You have to treat it. You know, if you're if you're a if you're a churchgoer and you tithe, 
um, you know, you want to you want to be consistent with your tithe. Um, if you're not a churchgoer and you need a more real world example, uh, your mortgage. Your mortgage shows up every single month. It's due on the first. Period. Got to pay it. Don't pay it. Uh, no housey housey. Yeah. So same thing goes here. Got to be consistent. And as and if you want more details on how to figure that out, as far as you know. I need to make this much money per month and and include my leads budget. We have a vo video up there called Formula Exposed. Six figure formula exposed. It'll be up here in this corner. Okay. So next, you ready? Okay. So uh, what is the is, is the biggest thing to consider when I'm considering this industry? The IMO. We kind of touched on it a little bit. So but So no, but it's a big it's if there's three components, it should be the IMO, it should be the person that you're gonna be working with or whosoever's hiring you. Um, are they going to give you um, support that is moderate support? You want support, but not a nanny. So that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something that's in that middle. And then you, those mm -hmm. three things you have to look and at. And to go back things. to your type A personality, someone said this week, actually several agents this week said that they, you, when you're looking for a coach, a coach is different than a parent. Okay? If you need a parent to tell you how great you are, even though you suck, that's not a coach. <laughs> okay, right. I don't tell people that they suck. Right? I mean, but you I want, it, right. you want the, you, the only way you can operate is stone cold facts and be truthful, right? right? Because if you, a parent will always love you no matter how bad you are. My, I just lost my mom, most of you know that. And I, one of the things I, t I, I whispered in her ear when she was passing was, I said, I said, Mom, you always loved me. And she whispered back to me and she said, I always loved you. Well, that's a parent. A coach loves you too, but they all, it's, it's tough love. You have to be honest or you can't learn. Right. You're not looking for, um, it, I'm working on a video that we'll probably do this week that's called, you know, do you want a coach or a BFF? Because your BFFs are there no matter what. And you doesn't, it, you know, they, they are that constant source of love and encouragement and a shoulder to cry on. And a coach is somebody that um, is going to take the, your mess ups or the errors or the things you're doing wrong and help correct them for you so that you can succeed. Um, a coach has an end has an end goal in mind. There is a goal, and that's what you should be looking for. Yeah, you know. And, and one thing I always say before you start blaming the leads on your lack of success, you should look in the mirror first because a lot of times, and, it, and it's not negative. I'm not trying to be negative, but we are. You we all start at the same place, which is we have no skill sets. And so while you're learning to, this business, it may very well be that you are not very good, not that the lead's no good. You have to learn how to work the lead. Did you say it's true? Learn how to, the phone script, how to handle the objections, the rebuttals, all that stuff, and to learn how to have a little bit bigger, thick skin. Well, and you have to, you approach everything else in your life that way. Think yeah. about the last job you got. You didn't show up, sit down at the desk, and they said, okay, have at it. You went through some training. Somebody sat next to you. Somebody watched over your shoulder. They evaluated your work. When you're training, you know? when you're training a child how to walk, the child right. falls down for six months before everyone learns how to walk. But you keep encouraging it, right? Right. So anyway, so two more questions. Is it important to work with somebody that has actually sold and gone out there in a the field, you know, selected a product, made a presentation in the home, and written an application that you should be coached and mentored by? Or can, is this just book knowledge? No, we and we. Uh, I, I talked about this in another video that you did. So here's my balance to that. Um, no, I, I think you absolutely have to work with somebody who has gone out and done production and run appointments. I think you should you should without question be working with somebody who, if they're not actively dialing their own leads, you know maybe they use an appointment setter or a spouse or something that they have done the, the lead dials. Um, but I absolutely think that you have to work with somebody who has put their name on their own application, been out in the field, dealt with the objections, um, and knows how to complete that cycle. Um, because it, it's very hard to teach someone how to do something that you don't have any skill set for because um, it comes off very... Um, trans it, the transparency that they don't know what they're doing is going to be really apparent because they're going to have very canned answers for you. Well, if somebody says this is too much money, well, just tell them it's not too much money. You know, that's a stupid response because that's not how the real world works when you're at a kitchen table. So, yeah, you got to have somebody and you got to work with somebody who um, has been out there and put their name on applications. Good. Last question. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is it. So you can expand. I want you to expand on this and I want you to tell them what you do. So how do you work with 
agents to train and equip them for success. Brand new agent, veteran agents, obviously maybe slightly different, but they all start at the same place. So what does your day look like? So my, my day as a whole, um, my, my day as a whole kind of starts, uh, start, start sometimes a little slow. Um, but actually not, that's not true at all because by the time I get up in the morning, um, our East Coast agents have already been on the phones or have already been running appointments or they've already been on the phone with carriers dealing with declines or issues or stuff that's needed. So by the time I get up in the morning, um, my email's already kind of buzzing with some of that little, that, that, that chitter chatter of stuff that has to be dealt with. But for a new agent, um, so then my day is filled with some appointments on the phone in terms of um, agents who need phone script training. So very important if you're starting for the first time, um, you should go through that phone script with somebody. Just ask somebody to listen, whether it's your, your, your whoever hired you, your manager, your upline, whatever, whatever the term is. Um, you know, ask them to just, can you just listen to me and see if this, how this sounds? Um, and you should be practicing your phone script all the time. So that's the first thing. So I do that. And then I'm typically, is that, is that ongoing coaching or you just get one coaching and segment and you're done? So, um, both. So I do the phone script training with agents and I always tell people you should be recording those phone sessions with whomever your coach is. If it's me, I expect that you're recording it because I'm going to give you tips and pointers and I want you to hear how you sounded the wrong way and how it should sound the right way. So it's important for you to be able to go back and listen to it over and over again, Good. right? And then, um, but it should be ongoing. So if you find yourself where you're struggling to make lead dials or you're struggling on the phones, you should be coming back to that person for a little more for some, you know, uh, continuing. And then um, lead dials in the morning. Everybody should make some amount of lead dials in the morning or on your lunch break if you're still if you still have a nine to five or job or a job. Use your lunch break to dial a half hours worth of leads. And then my afternoon is lead dials and my evening is running appointments. Okay, so what else are you doing with the agents? That's what I know. So, um, so you're you're, you're so doing role playing with them, phone strip playing. role playing. You help them with you know with lead purchases, what type of, what type of leads? Right. Then once they book the appointment, what's going on? So then you're going to take. We use a client qualification sheet. So the questions we do a no before you go. You've heard Steve talk about that. So we get medical information on the phone with the lead before um, the client agent goes into the home. So I have agents all day long that are sending me those client sheets. Um, and then I'm kind of evaluating that and getting back on the phone with them and saying, why don't you use this product for this client? And then, um, then they're going to go into the home. They're going to do their worksheets up so they have their materials presentable for their client. And then um, once they've written that application, they're going to turn around and send that application over to me or whoever your coach is to get that application scrubbed before you submit it so that it can go right to the carrier's um, without having a lot of missing stuff. From submission to commission. Right. And then um, from there, I'm kind of keeping one eye on the application myself with the carriers. And when I see stuff that's popped up that, you know, it is needed, um, I try and work with that agent so that um, they can get those things satisfied with the carrier and understand what the problem might be or where there's an issue or if they need to do a phone interview or whatever that might be. And then uh, that's it. That's all I got. All done. That's it. I got nothing else. And I where I want my 200 points. How much does that product selection mean? The product selection is really important, and we'll do another video on this because I think we're... What are they getting at home and they're stuck? Then they should call me. Yeah. Or you or whomever. Call somebody. Should have that in-home help because, again, mm -hmm. you want to get the application while you're in the home because going back isn't... It won't work. That's not this kind of business. It's just not this kind of business. I know it seems like... It should well, be. everybody's going to be your best friend calling you next week. Because it's supposed to be a relationship business. It's but not. it you just, you, you know, it doesn't not. work. It doesn't work. If it worked, everybody would, the majority of applications would be written in a second appointment. Yeah, yeah. And you get and maybe 1% of people calling back. Yeah. All right, well, fantastic. So when are we going to get you back? So we'll do another one this week on um, coaching styles. Maybe. Well, that's a nice way to put it, on coaching styles. And then we'll do one on... Um, product selection there's a kind of a longer version i'd like to have you come back and talk about non-med 
you know, why non-med? Okay. Why, why, why would you go, if, if you ever go with fully unwritten or, or a medical policy, why guaranteed issue? What are the three types of products you need to have in your, in your briefcase in order to be successful as an agent? You want to have all those things, right? Yep. So because based on the person's You got to have all of those things, but you don't have to have all of all of those things. Right. And we'll talk about that. Yeah. Okay. All right. We always make a, a customary comment here about clicking on the, on the subscribe button. Make a comment and say, hey, wave to Angela on the comments and ask her some questions. Maybe, maybe you can answer those questions in the next video. That'd be that. cool. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, make some comments, share the video out to other agents. That helps us reach other people um, that may be struggling in the industry. And don't forget that little bell button that's right over here. It's like a little, little bell, little bell right over here. Uh, mash that bell and you'll get instant notifications of our live streams that we're trying to do a lot more. I think we did a couple of them last week that were well received and uh, got a lot of a lot of views. And uh, hey, appreciate you being part of the channel. And uh, we really enjoy doing this. At least I enjoy doing this. Somebody has to be coarse and begged. It's, it's actually going to cost me a barbecue dinner tonight at what is it called? Lucille. Luce, at Lucille's Barbecue Restaurant. So I uh, hope all of you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Great answers. Well, my points. What points? You said it was just 200 points. 200 points? Yeah, 200 points. You just have a good rib. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs>